Main things to consider setting up a workspace for working with contractors. Short-term contracts like two to six months, they're people external uh, and they might have their own workspace or email domains. Okay, great question, let's cover that. If you're interested in bringing contractors into your business in Google Workspace, there's a couple of key considerations that you might wanna make to make sure that your business data is secured and you don't have contractors stumbling across stuff that you don't want them to have access to. Now, I'm gonna show you a few things that you can do in the admin panel and some of the best practices with sharing that I recommend for your contractors, uh, and that'll keep your data safe and your contractors happy. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna jump into the admin panel. And in our admin panel, we're gonna create a group. So to access the right place, we're gonna to go to our directory and then groups, and we're going to add a new group. Now, I usually just call this group contractors. And then if you've got multiple domains, obviously you wanna choose the appropriate domain for that group. Description doesn't really matter. Owner, probably gonna be yourself if you're the business owner. And then you might want to tick the security button here. Not mandatory, but it can make things easier as you get more sophisticated with your permissions in the future. So I'll click the next button and then I can start to choose who I want to add as group. Oh no, this is not group members yet. This is group permissions. <laughs> First up, we're gonna do our group permissions. So my standard setup for groups is to click the restricted button, which changes some of these settings. And then I generally choose for people to be able to view members across the organization. That's just in case I add somebody who is maybe adding people to calendar events and they wanna make sure that if I invite this group to a calendar event, then all of the group members can be seen by other people within the business. So I let the entire organization see who is in the group that is useful, right? Cool. Now, next up, you've got the question of whether or not you give external access to this group, right? So you've got contact group owners. I mean, generally you don't really ever need that, but you may choose who can post if you want someone to be able to email contractors at yourcompany.com and have that email go out to everyone who's a member, well, you might choose for people inside the business or even outside your company to be able to email this email address. Now that makes it act like what's called the distribution group or like a group email address. If you want people to be able to email contractors at yourcompany.com and have it go to all the members, you would tick this box. Generally, that's probably gonna be a no because you would only have people inside the business emailing that group. And uh, if you just want it to be you, you could have just group managers or just group members be able to, it's called post, but it basically means who can use that email address. Remember we're using this for permissions though. That's some email stuff, but mainly we're gonna be using this just for permissions. So this is typically my recommendation. You hit restricted, remove external there, and then add view members permission to everyone and that keeps it reasonably locked down. So who can join the group? I will change that to only invited users. And importantly, we wanna tick the box here to allow members outside your organization. Now, what that allows is people to be added to the group if they're outside your Google Workspace domain. So we use itgenius.com and anyone outside that domain is gonna need to have this box ticked before they can be invited. If they don't have a Gmail or a Workspace account, and that's very rare, most people do have them, they'll have to go and sign up for one. Unfortunately, you can't use a standard email address. It's gotta be a Workspace account or a Gmail account. Once we've created a group, we can use this group in many useful places across our Google Workspace account. If we wanna invite the group to a calendar event, everyone in the group will get an invitation to that calendar event. If we wanna add that group to a chat room, everyone in the group will have the ability to join the chat room. You can send the URL of the chat room and they have permission to join. Number three, when you add the group to a shared drive, anyone who is a member of the group will get access to the shared drive. And I really love this feature because even if they have a Gmail account or a Google Workspace account, and they don't know where to go to access Drive, if you add them to the group and you invite that group to the Drive, it's just automatically gonna show up in their Google Drive, which is really groovy. So let's go to our Google Drive and we'll go to our shared drives and we'll create a new shared drive for our contractors. Manage members, and here's where we're gonna invite the group. Now, here is something really, really important. You wanna be very careful with what permission you give the contractors group. 
Some businesses may only want to give them viewer access. Some businesses might want to give viewer and comment. The maximum access that I would ever give contractors is the contributor role. That is the ability to add, edit, and yes, share files as well, but not delete files. Very, very important. Effectively, that means that you are the master of the Dropbox of the company drive. Other people can put stuff in, but they can't delete it or take it out. Now, the great thing about this is if you've ever shared a folder just in your My Drive and you've shared it with a contractor who's using a Gmail account outside your business, if they put files into that folder, you own the folder, but they own the files. And that's a big no-no. So Share Drive solves that problem by allowing anyone who puts files in to automatically be forced to transfer the ownership of those files to the company. So someone puts a folder in or a file in, all of a sudden, you are the new owner of that file or your company is the new owner of that file. And that's why we don't let them delete things. We let anyone put something in, but not delete it or take it out. Now, so here's what it looks like if someone's got a file in their My Drive that they've created for your business and they wanna move it into the shared drive. They can drag and drop it if they want, or they can use the move menu here, shared drives. Let's find my contractor's drive. Move. And this is what will pop up and prompt them. Everyone who sees test contractors will gain access. Do you want to change the ownership? So that's how files become owned by the company when they're moved into the shared drive. The next thing you want to do is you want to go to your shared drive settings. Now that's different to the membership. The membership is here. Settings, you can access it up here or you click on the shared drive and go to shared drive settings gives you advanced settings for this shared drive. And these are very important for when you're setting up contractors. So uh, yes, allow people outside your company to access files, allow people who aren't shared drive members to access files. Well, this is an interesting one. You might choose that only specific contractors that you have named in the group can ever access files within this shared drive. You would untick that box. And it means that only people who are named there, or if maybe you're a builder and you're sharing a plan or a design with an electrical contractor and they've got an apprentice that works for them that needs to actually do the installation. Okay, cool. In that case, we'll tick the box and we'll let them share it with people on an as needed basis. But that's how you lock things down if you really wanna lock it down so only a specific human or group of humans can access it. Role permissions, allow content managers to share folders, that's fine. Content managers are only gonna be internal in your business because we're not giving that permission to anyone outside. This is another really cool one. Allow viewers and commenters to download, print, and copy files. If you untick this box, any of the files that you put into this shared drive cannot be downloaded, printed, or copied. And that's really cool if you're worried about a contractor stealing your intellectual property, making copies, or if it's highly sensitive data and you just want it really well protected. You don't want anyone to be able to make copies. now. Can someone set a screenshot? Yes, of course. They can always save pictures and documents page by page. But if you've got a thousand documents in there, they're probably not gonna bother if they have to do it manually and it just makes their job harder. It's very easy and think about someone who wants to steal your information. They're probably not all that smart, right? It's very easy for someone to chuck in a USB stick, download absolutely everything from your Google Drive and then you know go to a print shop and get it printed. It's really hard for them to screenshot every page of a thousand documents. So I really like this one if you wanna lock it right down to contractors that you're just providing information but you're not really doing much uh, collaboration with. So there we go, they're the different options inside your shared drive. You add the contractors group to the shared drive and then uh, you're able to access that for everyone. Same, same when you go to your calendar events, if you create an event and on that event you invite the contractors Anyone who's part of the contractors group, in this case, it's just one person, they will get access to the event that you have shared. And the thing that I love about this, when you invite a group to a calendar event, and if it's a repeating event that happens, like, I don't know, maybe you have a contractors meeting once a week or something like that. If you add a new contractor next week, they get the invitation to the recurring event. Now, this doesn't happen right across the board, doesn't happen in chat, Unfortunately, they get they don't get emailed an invite if you add them to the group later, but if you add them to the group, they'll get the drive shared drive immediately when they get onboarded and they'll get the calendar invites immediately when they get onboarded, even if you set up the calendar in the past. Love it. If you need more help with what we've covered in this video, 
IT Genius provides support services to businesses all over the world with problems just like this. Click the link below to get started.